Hello, and welcome to I Choose You, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. My name is Jeremy Zelik, and I'm the host and Alton Brown of the group. Joining me this week, as always, is... A uh, friend of the show, Ben Montoya. Ian Davis, the Thomas Jacob Black of the show. Mm. And... Uh, it's it's Evan Aubrey, oh, my no. in, invisible, the purest drink, air. Air. <laughs> Sometimes the purest Lacroix is the one in your brain. Yes, that's, that's true. Mind over matter. So, uh, Evan, why why no drink on this uh, this uh, this record? I forgot. Okay. <laughs> uh, Do you want to go is, grab one? I, we maybe can... I will. Yeah. Like hang yeah. Go out, go. You know. Hey, get comfortable. All right. Yeah. Oh, I can sit you. right in. Yeah. Okay. I'll be right, yeah. I'll be right back. Bye. Okay, uh, Ian's drinking a, a glass of refreshing water. Do you put any uh, anything in that water? Maybe a twist of lemon. Oh, you got some tea. Uh, what kind of tea you got there? You got your cozy little like robe on too. Like it seems like you're just about to snuggle into bed right after this. Well, you better believe I fucking am. Also, <laughs> today was uh, election day, so I did have the day off. Nice and not remotely like a vacation day for me i like oh, the opposite of that but yeah. did get to take a nice shower before sitting down for this i got my bengal spice in my uh special vegetable mug yeah it's got carrots <laughs> on it it looks nice. like some chili peppers or something i got carrots i got uh, peppers uh green onions mm. and uh, you can't see on the other side but i have tomatoes and asparagus as well i don't Beautiful. know three of those things are fruits i don't know if i'd call that a vegetable mug <laughs> <laughs> veggie tails yeah, it's meanwhile. a produce mug <laughs> oh, it's modello shit. time <laughs> oh yeah all right <laughs> uh ben what do you've got today i'm drinking a scenic loop ipa from pizza port brewing company <laughs> oh <Mama Mia. laughs> they hey. have some pizza port uh here i get that, that like rotating every week it's pretty is, good is it, that this is really good the restaurant in toy story mm. Maybe oh, the the space themed pizza place. Yeah, pizza. The, the logo definitely doesn't like uh, invoke that. So if it is, it's it's like maybe they're trying to fly under the copyright radar, you know. <laughs> and so um, when you drink it, do you, does it feel like you're like on some sort of scenic loop, maybe a nice drive or hike or something? It definitely does. This is a really refreshing one. Um, I feel like this definitely stands out above the crowd of some of the other craft uh, IPAs I've had recently. This nice, one's nice pretty pretty tasty jeremy to answer your question toy story was uh pizza planet ah sorry oh i'm pizza sorry planet. i impinged on the good we're, we're uh people of pizza port oh yeah, right because exactly the aliens yeah the aliens right okay that's where they come from if it was pizza port the aliens would be like surfer dudes well i mean you could have a port in space i'm not saying that's uh it's impossible <laughs> That's true, I guess. Impossible. <laughs> Some might say a spaceport. Uh, any, <laughs> I'm drinking a classic uh, Sandia black cherry hard cider, which is, of course, always very delicious My and man. refreshing. My man. Um, I want to start this episode of I Choose You by asking some uh, hard hitting questions. So this uh, it is episode, election night. So. Uh, yeah, uh, hardball. Um, but this is more important. Chris Matthews. <laughs> yes. More importantly. Um, we're recording this on Tuesday, which is usually when we post episodes because mm -hmm. uh, there was some travel going on with the uh, hosts of I Choose You. Mm. Um, and mm. uh, Evan and Ian were out of town. And I've heard that, Evan, you were in Canada? I was. Recently? E Eastern Canada. Almost, almost French territory. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yes. And so I have to know, every time someone travels someplace, uh, did you have any interesting food experiences in canada so ottawa you, you know you might think of just generally in canada like poutine obvious choice uh but ottawa also has a lot of good shawarma so i did have some good shawarma oh. while i was there that's cool was it like yeah. out of like a truck or did you go to like a restaurant? no it was it was definitely like late night like drunk food where you just like wander around and you're like oh this shawarma place is open and we're gonna just mm -hmm. like stumble in and be like oh <laughs> I can imagine that being really nice in like a snowy, really wintry place to just be like, oh my god, this shawarma place, like the heat. I can I can see the steam like the coming out of the restaurant. Is, well, it was it was funny because like big normally normally this time of year in Ottawa, like my coworkers were like, oh man, you you better like go now because like in two weeks it's just gonna become you know full on winter, like you know mm -hmm. under freezing, like all all you know months at a time and. 
So I, I was glad I was not there during the winter, but it was like, you know, crisp enough where I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. this is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, never been to never been to Ottawa. Uh, I've there's only one place I've been in Canada, and that's Vancouver. It was very nice, but well, maybe do, you well, oughta do it. Oh, wow! <laughs> 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 a little known fact is that actually the capital of Canada is named after the combination of a small river mammal and the proclamations of one Waluigi. So they're like, <laughs> Otter, <wah>. yeah. <laughs> Um, language evolved and here we are yes that was um, that was back in waluigi's uh french explorer phase yes he was a fur trapper yeah <laughs> in the 18th century <laughs> yeah Two, 200 <laughs> bw yes before waluigi and then he'd uh, like scam you for you know he, he would like give you some like beaver pelts but they'd yeah. be just like rats or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you live rats yeah <laughs> Um, I, I mean, honestly, if I bet he would trick me into painting a fence, the greatest mm. scam of all, um, <laughs> in some regards, um, Ian, you were also traveling. I heard you're in the uh, fine state of, uh, Massachusetts, uh, this previous weekend. Uh, did you have any like lobster or seafood? Uh, absolutely not. No, it was a pretty <laughs> quick trip. I was officiating a wedding of which, uh, some mm. of the listeners of the show, uh, in fact, uh, Nick and Brooke, oh. if you're listening to this, uh, congratulations on your wedding. <gasps> Whoa, oh wait, they were I Choose You listeners. Mm-hmm. This is and our first I Choose You wedding. Oh my god, wow. I don't know if they're... Congratulations. Like, I don't know how often they listen, but they, they've been known to to dabble. And <laughs> uh, one, Ed Sen, couldn't be there, but did mm-hmm. uh, was phoned in, and we passed the phone around to like all the tables so that they could say hi to everybody. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nice. What was the uh, what was the meal of the wedding? Oh, all right. Let me. There we go. This is what Top I'm notch. here for. Yeah. Top right. notch. Um. Well. All right. So like you know you know you have to like the RSVP. You have to like select your meal like ahead of time. Meter fish or whatever. Right. I have no fucking idea what I wrote on the card like <laughs> six months ago, but this dude goes around to every table. He's like, oh yeah. Uh, what do you ha- like? What did you, what did you have? What did you say? And I'm like. I really don't know. Like, why would I? Isn't this your job to know? Yeah, isn't that what the card is for? Some might right. say. Yeah. Um, so I was like, lamb, I guess. And that was the right. That was letter C. That was the correct mm. answer. Because mm. just imagine, and every plate was like this, identical. Lamb shank, huge, with like the bone sticking out the top uh, on a bed of uh, mashed potatoes and um uh cooked um uh sweet potato Ooh. Ooh. that sounds so fall and just like it was delightful. Mm. so if you just yeah if you didn't actually write c on your card did you just like steal the most beautiful lamb shank from somebody else at the wedding? <laughs> well that's what i tried to i was like i i think lamb but like if i'm wrong am i like fucking someone and he was like nah we got enough okay all right so, nice. nice that sounds awesome but, um, yeah a good a good lamb shank i had i had you know when i was in spain um they really they they were really good and they, they really got you uh kind of situated and, and mm. it's not lamb isn't like a food item i cook regularly because you know it's kind of a lot of effort and you know you don't get a lot of it like in return because it's kind of small but when someone else is giving it to you oh baby that's oh, the good baby. stuff I know we have to move on to our, uh, the main, speaking of meat, um, the main meat of our show, um, but I also was um, traveling kind of uh, busy this last weekend while we weren't recording, and I went camping, and I wanted to share with you a, uh, a moment that I think you can all, um, that will per- perplex your mind and make you uh, feel things, uh, which is okay. a picture that I'm sending to you via chat, uh, or text chat. Um, okay, we're all looking at our phones. I will describe this picture for the listener at home who doesn't have the visual stimulation, the visual you, aids, perhaps. Oh, no. Um, Super if you can imagine, If you can imagine a cold... You're camping, right? Yes. Okay. You brought your ice-cold beverages with you in your uh, little cooler or whatever. Your Super you, like, just You just set up your you know tense and you got your fire going you're like kicking back you throw your feet up on the you know little bench or whatever and then you start to crack open your drink which 
in this case was a friend of mine who uh, brought Bang energy drinks. But um, mm, yes. so that <laughs> might have been at, the was problem. Was this at night or in the morning? Like, was this to get you started or to chill you this out? Was, this is like late afternoon, maybe okay. like, you know, right. four or five o'clock or something. Um, and uh, you go to crack it and, you know, the tab instead of cracking the can actually just bends in the middle <laughs> Um, preventing you from, you know, uh, slurping up that sweet bang energy drink. Um, That's so disappointing. I know. I've never seen a can tab do this before, where instead of it's actually like doing its fucking job, it just crumbles <laughs> under the pressure, the structural <laughs> integrity <laughs> of it. It's uh, that triangle. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, well, did you stab open this uh, can with like a pair of car keys or something? I think they just gave up. Um, cause they were like, I don't know, I, there's nothing I can do here. Um, and they did have a, a separate bang energy drink in the cooler that did work. So well, back up, you could have yeah, opened the, that one with the other one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, you're in the woods. Isn't there like a rock that you can get to like, you know, smash it open kind That's of situation? Terrible. It's not a survival trip, Jeremy. I mean, you, but you would be mutilating your bang can, which makes it harder to drink. You know, you'd have no. to kind of like try to shotgun it. But not, using like, not only rock. that, but you would be like fucking the environment if you spilled that on the ground. Like, yeah, you like, like <laughs> it's like the blood from the alien movies where it like touches the ground and like starts dissolving into the yeah. earth. Exactly. It's like yeah. If the next time you go camping, look around and see if there's any like you know like if you have a lawn and you have a dog that like pisses on that one spot and grass can't grow there anymore. That's mm-hmm. what bang energy drink does mm-hmm. to the environment. So but if what you see. It- if you see a spot, you know, near your campsite where there's like nothing can grow there anymore, it's probably because too many people, you know, sprayed their bang energy drink on too it. Too much banging. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But ben, did you drink the bang? I didn't. Okay. You're, I mean, you're not a big energy drink drinker. So, no. Uh, I would say in general, caffeine gives me anxiety. So I didn't do it. <laughs> oh man, I've slammed so much caffeine last couple of days because let me tell you, it's time to change. I fucked me up. I'm not That's all right. I'm not, okay. I'm not judging anyone for, you know, craving that sweet calf, but yeah. um, slash like uh, whatever they put in energy drinks. But it's Super not creatine. Yep. I did um while I was, while I was away, I wanted to like, do you ever go on vacation? You're like, I'm going to try and be like a different person. Like I'm going to be different on this. Yeah. Show. You're like, I- oh, yeah. Ian is, Ian is left behind in Albuquerque. Where, <laughs> who am I today? Um, I used to do this very literally. <laughs> so this trip, I wanted to be. <laughs> it's true. Oh my God. I forgot about this. Sorry. Just to pause your uh, story for one second. Um, Jeremy would literally, when we would go on trips, like in high school, um, and do things like with this church group that we were involved with. He would literally go and tell people and introduce himself with a different name every time. (laughs) And so everyone knew him as a different name and he would stick with it for the whole, you know, two weeks or week that we were there. And so people would be like, oh, my God, I'm going to miss you, Lionel. (laughs) Andrew. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yes, Ian, continue. Why don't you keep doing that, Jeremy? Uh, Because it's it's kind of like gaslighting people for no good reason. (laughs) He's learned. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, when you're when you're 14 and being a, a, a little bratty like teenager, you think it's funny because you're lying to strangers uh, and they, they and you get to like act differently. But as an adult, you realize that's a bad way to <laughs> form connections with people um, <laughs> as a, as a human because then you're 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 put you're you're, you're, you're you're again you're literally lying. The first thing you're doing is you're lying to them about who you are, but. Uh, it is kind I, of a girl boss move, though, if you think it, about it. Like, I, you're you gatekeeping know, your true identity and yes. you're gaslighting them into thinking <laughs> something else entirely, which, wow. I mean, you're kind of nailing it. Yes. Uh, though retribution, uh, one time I did that when we went to Puerto Rico, and then I fell over a bunch of times in front of people. Uh, like, I tripped <laughs> over, like, wires and, like, fell in front of people doing, like, a, a talk show thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, there they're you like, go. Daniel, uh, are you okay? Yes, uh, that was the Lionel <laughs> trip. And they're like, oh, Lionel, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> Go talk to me. <laughs> so Ian, as, as you were saying. Yes, continue. Well, I got to, as you guys know, I don't drink coffee. Mm. But on this trip, I was like, what if I was one of those people that like has coffee with dessert? Okay. Mm. I feel like that's like a, a tradition that I don't see as much anymore. Like that's kind of like a, 
Like my parents would do that. Mm-hmm. Like my grand, like my Italian grandparents, absolutely like had to have your coffee I, like, oh, after dinner. I only do dessert. it like for fancy restaurants. I'll be like, yeah, I'll same. take an espresso. Give me, mm. or sometimes when I'm at a fancy restaurant, I'll be like, I want an Irish coffee. So, because mm. mm. nice. then then that cuts kind of the uh, the caffeine thing by making me a little schwasty. So, mm-hmm. so did you do the uh, the old coffee with dessert routine? Yeah, I didn't like get to. I didn't have it like with the dessert because it was mm. it was at the wedding and we had already had our cake. But they did put out coffees and teas, and I was like, "What the fuck? Let's <laughs> let's live go, a little. Let's get let's get crazy tonight." <laughs> Were you <laughs> hyper for the rest of the night? Caffeine. I don't. I get no kick from coffee. <laughs> 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 um, I really don't. So okay. Well, that's good. That's always my fear. Some you know, if I am intrigued by doing something like that, is or like maybe having a cup of tea in the evening, mm-hmm. I then find it hard to fall asleep. Yeah, I mean, our boy Slam Cal, he won't touch tea after noon. Because he's like, oh, it'll keep me up all night. <laughs> okay, well, that's a little extreme. <laughs> look, look I, I get the I get the premise, but it's usually usually it's after like five p.m. Because I don't go to bed for like six more hours anyway. So it's not like like I you like at three p.m. Sure, I'll use I'll take some caffeine. That's nap time. So, and if I need to keep going for whatever reason, gladly take a, a little less uh, swift kick in the nards kind of situation. I will say that that rule doesn't necessarily apply to uh, Mormons who have no tolerance for anything. Mm. So if you're a Mormon and you're listening to this, don't try it. Well, I would be, look, I'm not saying to our fine Mormon listeners, um, I would be, one, I'd be surprised if there are any listening currently, um, though we have had episodes downloaded in the great state of Utah, um, just might be while someone else, while someone was there at the moment. Um, uh, uh, Secondly, um, uh, it's uh, stop it. It's hard to buy coffee in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's uh, that's my opinion on the situation. All right, I think we've wrapped up kind of like the introductory material. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna keep it going by talking about new Pokemon. Boo 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 mm. boo boo. The Muse. Um, so uh, we've been out of the loop for a couple of weeks because of uh, travel stuff kind of situation. Uh, but uh, we have a uh, first of all. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has leaked on the internet. The whole game is out there. You can see everything about it. So if you don't want you don't want spoilies, you don't want to know what the final evolution of the starters are. Uh, they're just uh, crawling around on the internet. I have not looked at them because I don't. I want to keep you know. I want to keep the surprise. The, the headphones are coming off. I'm not. I'm not. Ian, We're not spoiling. Headphones back on. <laughs> I'm, I'm just no, saying. No spoilers here, friend. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to spoil it. Like. All all day, you know, people like the elections on Twitter or whatever. But all day, all I saw trending on Twitter was Quaxley, like ninety thousand <laughs> tweets about Quaxley. So he must turn into a one real motherfucker to get that going uh, mm. all day kind of situation. Mm. Um, but uh, a, a new Pokemon was introduced too. It's a treasure chest, and it's called Gimme Ghoul, and it's like Gimme mm. Money. Uh, That's a good it's one. A, and it's like it's like a mimic, like you would see like in a, a different game. But it's a Pokemon, which mm. I think is cute. Uh, so that's mostly what I wanted to say. I think I saw someone uh, in the Discord. I think it might have been Jill in the Discord say that it looks like the Reddit icon, and it kind of does. It does look I like the Reddit admit. icon. <laughs> it's like uh, a little alien with like a like money, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody wants that Reddit gold. Yes, oh. I guess so. <laughs> this is what you turn into. A vote. Give them to me. Um, all right. Well, that's all I want to say. That also. Scarlet Violet swiftly approaching next week, I believe, is when it comes out uh, next Friday. So um, uh, mark your calendars, uh, get it going, um, and uh, enjoy uh, for your uh, Thanksgiving uh, gaming sesh. All right. Uh, I think that covers everything preambly. So let's move into the main course. Uh, This is I Choose You. Each week, we randomly select a new Pokemon to cook and eat. We come up with delicious recipes, and then we serve this Pokemon to each other, and we decide who has the most delicious, just like, oh, I'm going to fucking eat that shit right up recipe. Mm -hmm. Now, it has been two and a half weeks since we've recorded, so I don't remember who won last time. Um... So let's I, start. Let's. Some, I'm just well, gonna pick. Ben, do you have a theory? Do you have a theory? I kind of think it was Ian. I think Ian won like two times. That's in what a I row. thought that as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. In fact, Jeremy would like to forget. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. I mostly look. I mostly forget because like the relentless passage of time is slowly eroding <laughs> my ability to tell 
what has happened and what is currently happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, with that information is said, Ian, why don't you start off our recipes this week? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Thomas Jacob Black, who, uh, if you're unfamiliar, a uh, very well, well-known voice actor voiced uh, the lead in Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> oh, there we go. I just oh, forgot that is, his full that name. Is, wait, yeah. that was Jack name. Black. <laughs> Are you telling me he lied? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, fucking destroyed. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. All right. I, was, um, I think wait, you mean the voice on, actor yeah. now well known for voicing Bowser in the <laughs> Mario trailer. Yes. There it is. Oh, that's the trailer, why you didn't not, recognize him. Not yeah, the movie, exactly. the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, I have a question. If you met Jack Black IRL and he was like hanging out at a restaurant or something and you're walking by him, would you would you talk to him would you uh talk to him by saying his full real name? Thomas, <laughs> my guy Tom. Hey Tom, how's it going? Tom. Tommy B. Yeah, his real name is called Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they might. I don't know. No, um, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd definitely be like, Mister Black. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> Please, like, sign my butt or something. I don't know. Like, Whoa, <laughs> that that escalated. The, when I think the, of Jack the other Black, butt I think cheek, of right? The word cock. Because, <laughs> I don't know. That's just like his preferred uh, phallic uh, vocabulary word. Probably. I see it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think he'll say that in the Mario movie? <laughs> <laughs> Let Bowser see. say cock. Yeah. Bowser's like, wow, Mario must have a sweet cock for Princess Peach. <laughs> Jesus. So, okay, wait. It's more <laughs> of like know. an envious thing than it yeah. is like a, <laughs> like a <laughs> boastful <laughs> thing. So, so Bowser's bigger than Mario anyway. So I do think... <laughs> You know, inherently, <laughs> just like law of averages kind of situation, yeah, that he would be winning that situ- winning that fight, but obviously not according to Thomas. What is his middle name again? Jacob. Jacob. That's where the Jack Thomas comes Jacob from. Black. Yeah. But see, you would think that like all that passes through your mind, but then it cuts to Mario with like a prize-winning rooster. <laughs> and it turns okay. out your mind was in the gutter. Yeah. This, whole time. this is a children's movie. Bowser said nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to I'm going to say something. I don't know if this is true overall, but I have noticed at least in the last 5 or 6 years that I have seen movies that are rated PG where a character does say shit once. Fuck. Not fuck, just shit. Uh, yep. fuck is a little too extreme, but they do say shit. And I I I uh, the two two films, I'll throw them out there uh that that I noticed this in, The Farewell, Leave No Trace, where character says shit. And it's a PG rated movie. Now, granted, those are grounded character dramas and not a film for children. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that changes the balance. But all I'm saying is that theoretically, someone in the Mario movie, which I assume will be rated PG because those are kind of where, where those movies hit at, yep. could say shit and it could be Bowser. Or Tim. I think, I think <laughs> shit is the, just the new crap. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I agree. No one says crap anymore. And so under you, I. When I'm like, my class is just like fucking around and they play something really bad. I'll just like pause and I'll just stare at them. I'll be like, that sounded like crap. And they're like, oh, well, they're, they're shocked <laughs> by that. Jeez. <laughs> well, they're shocked by that only because like I never talk like that. So yeah, it, that's my like, you need like Mr. Davis is about to like lose his mind. If you don't <laughs> get it and the you. novelty of it. I feel like there's something so like, uh, just like angry about saying crap. Like you sound like just. Like, you could say, oh, I don't care about that shit, and it sounds like you don't give a Casual. shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah. if I don't give a crap, that sounds a little, you, like, maybe you do, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like Look, chill out, dude. Here, here's my hypothesis, is that um, the word crap is too strongly associated with Peter Griffin on the television oh, show. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and, yeah that's true. About that. And, oh, and so when you say it, now it sounds like you're, you're, talk, you're trying to be like Peter Griffin. Right. Mm-hmm. So like someone like, someone needs to make the the ven or the graph that shows like popularity of like crap usage and then like the seasons of Family Guy. I feel like those two <laughs> slopes kind of intersect at a, a critical point. Yeah. <laughs> all right. He, says, uh, all right. Yeah. Let's let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> episode over. Episode over. So um, you know, obviously, I looked up like 
panda recipes, panda meat recipes. Wait, did we say what Pokemon already? Oh, we didn't. We're fucking cooking Pancham. Jesus Christ. We're all <laughs> this is, this is, I mean, you've read it on the episode title. But, yeah, yeah. But like, this is what we get for not recording for like two weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pancham, panda Pokemon. I looked up like, e- you know, eating pandas. Let's like gobble them up. Um, and people are against it. They're not for it. I wonder why. <laughs> I've been added once again to some sort of government watch list <laughs> because of this podcast. <laughs> um, you know, there's like a Facebook group or something that's like, oh, let's eat pandas. Let's eat pandas. Yeah. Um, so I did my best. Like, I sleuthed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Didn't find a lot because what everyone's just too fucking chicken shit to <laughs> to say the truth. I disagree <laughs> Look, I feel like many years many moons ago three years ago when we did our teddy ursa episode we talked about how bear meat is very mealy mm. bad yeah so I, I feel like that could be associated with pandas because they are also bears right but they eat bamboo like they don't eat mm. meat like there's a problem with like mm. eating things that eat meat but this baby's a almost a pure herbivore almost mm. almost almost I don't, I'm not going to rule it. I'm not going to generalize yeah. the population, but <laughs> they're known for eating bamboo shoots. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to reckon probably doesn't taste bad. And they don't move around a lot either. Like they're pretty <laughs> they sedimentary mm-hmm. creatures. Mm-hmm. So I can see so, your point. Yeah. Um, cowards. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a difference between being cowardly and like, international law you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and no, if you weren't a coward you'd break that law to taste that sweet sweet <laughs> panda meat <laughs> so let's take this guy to panda town pound town <laughs> yeah that was yep so <laughs> pancham panda we're cooking it i'm inspired by pancham express mm, uh nice. famous you know uh chain of um uh, Chinese food because mm-hmm. China does exist in the Pokemon world somewhere. <laughs> I mean, we've, yeah. we've 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 talked about this where all the real places in the world exist like on a the other side of the Pokemon world, <laughs> just completely in parallel. They just don't go there. They know they exist, but they just don't go there. The, the, the Pokemon world is flat, and on the other side of that piece of paper is the real world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, like a, if you taped a piece of paper to a sphere. Yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um. So I'm going for a, a, a Pancham Express classic beef broccoli. Mm. You need cloister sauce. You need nice. sesame oil, sherry, soy sauce, sugar, cornstarch, um, beef flank if you're a fucking coward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Pancham flank. Yeah, you okay. are. Which That's I... adventurous of you to do on a podcast where we don't actually have to do anything. <laughs> 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 this is real <laughs> um also i'd like to propose that pancham is definitely like the like veal of panda because it's like the first form yes <laughs> so it's extra rare <laughs> nice and tender <laughs> yeah, it melts extra. in your mouth you don't even have to chew mm-hmm. yeah suck it ethics <laughs> <laughs> vegetable oil ginger uh garlic and then of course broccoli um mix all your liquids and like the sugar and the cornstarch you know get you're, you're making your sauce um take the take the pancham pieces uh and put it in a bowl and pour the sauce over it let that sit for like 30 minutes you know marinate it for 30 minutes and then you're going to get your skillet going with the vegetable oil or like a nice wok get that over some medium high heat um you know add your ginger and your your garlic get the, the fragrances going um sizzling and then Add the broccoli first. Fresh preferred, but like, if you're going to use Trader Joe's frozen broccoli, I'm not going to tell. Okay. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm just going to say that Pancham Express probably doesn't use fresh broccoli. Yeah. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I know, in, in this recipe, they're like, uh, fresh is always, or they have like a section that's like, oh, do, do, can you make beef broccoli ahead of time? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little secret about <laughs> how they do it. <laughs> Um, you know, let the, let the broccoli cook for about five to seven minutes, you know, get it 
you're looking for that bright green color, that nice, that nice color change. Take that out, set it aside. Um, and then you add the beef in the mar marinade and you, you get that going until it's nice and browned. And then you throw the broccoli back in, let the sauce cover it, take it off the heat. Um, and then uh, pop quiz, what do you guys, you walk up to the Panda Express line, you got white rice, fried rice, uh, chow mein, brown rice, if you want to make them like go to a different station to get that for you. Yeah. Um, what are you picking? Uh, fried rice, always. Yeah. For Mongolian, or not, uh, like broccoli and beef kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I would say right, white rice. Same, I, white rice, for sure. Yeah, I'd probably go... Can I get a scoop of each? Mm, yeah. Half, 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 <laughs> little swirl. You, you, like, go to yeah. an ice cream machine, and you pull down a lever, and, like, it just shoots out rice uh, onto your plate. I love that. Yeah, can I get a little of each? And then can you, like just run your finger through it and get a swirl going. <laughs> you make a smiley face on my plate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, that's my Pancham and Broccoli uh, <clears throat> Pancham Express. Nice. nice. All right. Delish. Let's, let's uh, go clockwise in my windows. Uh, so Evan, what is your recipe this week? My recipe this week uh, comes from a little, a little snack that I, I always love to get when I visit uh, you know, your favorite Asian grocery stores. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's called, I don't know if you've had it before. It's called hello Panda or in, in our world, hello Pan Cham. Nice. Mm. And, and what that is, is basically like, it's a, it's a crunchy little, think of like, think of like the texture of biting into a Pocky, but, mm -hmm. but it's a sphere and the chocolates on the inside. Yeah. Ooh. So it's like, it's kind like of like, a gusher. um, uh, it is, it is basically a baked gusher. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, it's kind of like an uh, inverse uh, Whopper, though, without malt kind of situation. Oh, I immediately went to Burger King when you said Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something else. Yeah. Uh, but so to, to make the these little uh, Hello Pan Chams, um, we're, we're absolutely going to take the Pan Chams bones to make our bread. Um, mm. Oh, shit. So okay. you're going you're gonna to grind those bones into your delicious cup of all-purpose flour. Uh, an eighth of a cup of sugar, some baking powder, a pinch of salt. Some uh, you're gonna need for the filling, some soy milk, some butter, and some. Uh, you'll, you'll have some egg white for glazing your little little cookie balls, and then you're gonna use a quarter cup of sweet chocolate chips uh, that you're gonna melt for your 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 filling, basically. So you're gonna mix all of the like doughy ingredients into a into a bowl. You're gonna pour that uh, pour some cool butter and and soy milk into that as well, so you get your nice little dough going. And then you're gonna basically, I think what we're gonna do instead of melting, so we have these little chocolate chips and you're basically just gonna like take a chocolate chip, wrap some dough around around it, right? And then do that, you know, an obscene number of times until you have a lot of them. Uh, shove that in the oven 150 degrees for 35 minutes. It doesn't have to be, you know, too hot. It's, it's pretty thin dough. So yeah, take that out and, and there you go. Your little Hello Pan Cham snacks. Um, can you make them look like it's head? So here's the thing, uh, and I'll post a picture in a second. These, these homemade ones are a little bit uh, ridiculous, but I'll post a picture of it in this the Skype chat. But it, they have like a panda stamp on them, so mm. that oh, you can okay. take Pan Cham's face essentially and like stamp it right on there. Nice. I will say this didn't factor. In, oh yeah, that's cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ima that's cute. Listener, imagine panda stamp. <laughs> Just um, exactly so what it I was gonna like. say. Like it has nothing to do with my recipe, but Pan Cham would make a great. And I want to underline this: a great brand mascot. Like <laughs> we talked about it with other Pokemon before, in terms of like marketing some of our food items. But like, holy shit! If I saw that little Pancham giving a little sassy, like you know, uh, his, his he's like crossing his arms, he's like kind mm -hmm. of sneering, like leering at the you know uh, uh, person buying it. I yeah. would I would buy it in a second. Uh, like, goddamn! What 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 is he marketing, Ben? What is he selling you? Well, in this case, it's like chocolate candies and whatnot, okay. which easy sell, <laughs> easy, right? Um, but I, I, you know, like that, uh, like kind of like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, like cereal with the panda on it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Slap a pan cham on there. I'm gonna buy it, even if it tastes like shit. Or you just take a bunch of those as cereal and then pour milk, and then like that's that's your cereal for kids. Ooh, Ian. Actually, uh, so I was just looking at the wiki, and they did uh, uh, sell milk. Uh, flavored ones 
Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. So it's like dry cereal on the go. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Was I uh, using I mean, dry like cereal can be milk. dry cereal on the go if you really want that. <laughs> I was going to say, Ian, were you the one that's against milk? Yes. In cereal? Yeah. So, like, there you go. That's all you need. Ian, have you ever got, like, a, like a spice grinder and just put powdered milk and cereal in it and then, like, made, like, a fine grain and then, like, snorted it uh, well, to, like, get cereal? Where is this going? <laughs> Pure cereal? <laughs> It's That's the only specific. thing that gets me through the fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not coffee, but man, just snorting cereal. Yeah. I like to imagine that you're at like your office or something and you're like, you know, lining up your little cereal powdered milk lines. And uh, then uh, uh, like your, your like boss comes in and you're like, oh, uh, it's not what it looks like. Uh, you like start scattering it around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the best way to do that would be like, you want some? <laughs> mm. There you go. Yeah. You're like, hey, breakfast. Perfectly breakfast. Yeah. Are, you, are you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, if it was Cocoa Puffs, then that, look, it would just be brown powder. And that first, yeah. I mean, it would be weird, but you would obviously be like, that's not uh, any drug I'm familiar with. <laughs> yeah. What I um, what I did want to say is I was reading, and it says that on some biscuits, uh, it's cartoon-style prints depicting uh, giant pandas doing various activities, such as fencing and archery. Right. And also hockey and baseball. Nice. And it wow. is a fighting type Pokemon. What activity do you want to see printed on your Hello Pantron? Greco Roman wrestling. Ooh. <laughs> so it's two of them like going at it, like yes. grappling. Okay. Yes. It is a it is a fighting um, type. Curling. Yeah, that's true. Curling. Curling. <laughs> curling. Coming out of Canada, fresh on my yeah. mind. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go that's with the only like, way fencing. to get around. Fencing. fencing fencing is a good one yeah though with the li- like little mask like off mm. you know mask right off. so you know that it's a panda yeah right exactly <laughs> <Fencer Of course>. <laughs> <laughs> you so you can to... see this little uh leaf that it's chewing which i love that the bulbapedia page specifies is not for any particular reason but just because pancham thinks it looks cool nice mm. which i mean it, i mean it's like smoking yeah well i mean i don't I think mean, he does look it. cool yeah it's undeniable if this so, fucking pancham came up on a motorcycle i'd be like oh shit this is too cool for school <laughs> he like flicks the little leaf at you yeah and like lands his motorcycle eye. explodes behind him yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right uh ben what's your recipe this week so my recipe is actually kind of similar to um ian's but it's different in a couple different ways mm-hmm. um i was also thinking of uh pancham express mm-hmm. which i think you know, for anyone who grew up near a mall or something similar, uh, it uh, <laughs> brings back some fond and maybe uh, in- unfortunate digestive memories. Yes, um, uh, some sort of gastro distress. Mm. It it you know, um, Pancham Express uh, like imprints on you. I think as a kid, <laughs> um, in good and bad ways. Um, but I was, you know, thinking about it, I was looking at, like, you know, uh, sort of homemade, like, copycat recipes for Panda Express um, on the internet. And then I kind of stumbled into something that I want to explore that I couldn't find an exact recipe for. But I'm going to try to kind of smush some two concepts together. Um, and that is a, uh, uh, like... It's not Pancham Express, but it is a little bit related to a menu item. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's Mongolian Pan Jam. Oh. Jam, you say? Jam. Jam. Jimmy Jam. So you might have heard of this thing called uh, Bacon Jam, which <laughs> is like, you know, uh, cooked down bacon, you know. Love uh, bacon jam. Yeah. So I've never actually had it, but it seems like people on the internet, as with any bacon thing, go fucking ape shit for it. So... It's the um, most epic of food items, Ben. It's undeniable. Exactly. Um, but I found one recipe that was for uh, beef bacon jam, um, which is sort of like a halal, kosher, uh, like um, equivalent to the bacon jam situation, but it's made with beef, not pork. Mm, um, nice. And for that reason, it comes out like uh, lo- similar to how, you know, like uh, beef looks, which is like black, brown, ish instead of like the pink red color of like bacon basically Mm. so 
Um, I'm imagining so and let me find the the recipe for that uh, beef bacon jam. So you're gonna um, you're gonna have some uh, you know take your um, like small little sliced uh, bits of uh, beef bacon um, and you're gonna fry them up for a little bit until they start to crisp up. Um, take it out and then um, you're going to cook down with the fat some uh, onions. And, like, really get them, like, super caramelized and sweet. They're just going to, like, totally break down into this, like, sticky, oniony y um, material. Um, and then you're going to add a little bit of water. It starts to kind of thicken into, like, more of a sauce. And you can add some, like, chili flakes if you want to make it, like, um, a little more spicy. Uh, then this recipe goes into one direction where it asks you to go, like, you know, add like bourbon and brown sugar and maple and balsamic vinegar. <clears throat> and that sounds really good. But I kind of want to go into the like Mongolian beef kind of category mm. of uh, of flavors. So instead of adding all that stuff, that this is now where you're going to kind of make your Mongolian beef like sauce. Um, kind of similar to what uh, Ian was doing. Um, so for that, you're going to want to instead... Um, add uh, uh, garlic and ginger to the like pan so that kind of cooks down for a little bit and then um, you're gonna add like uh, soy sauce and sesame oil and uh, uh, water and then also actually brown sugar is part of this as well um, and that's you're gonna kind of cook that down into a sauce and with your onions and everything um, so that it uh, kind of gets the uh, Chinese adjacent Asian fusion e Americanized um, kind of uh, uh, Mongolian beef sauce, and then you're gonna add back your uh, bacon, your beef bacon bits, um, and it's just gonna like cook all the way down until it's like just so like you can't like there are little bits of you know meat still in there, but it's all very like cooked into this like sauce nice. similar to a jam, um, and then to uh, serve it. You're going to get some uh, nice white, and it's very specifically white, uh, rice. And then you're going to, like, layer on a little, like, some clumps of the uh, uh, beef bacon jam. Make it kind of look like uh, Pan Cham's face. Like oh, little, I see. You know, two eyes and two ears on the side. And then you're going to take a little uh, mint leaf. And you're just going to put it right in the middle. Hey. <laughs> and it's not for eating. It's specifically not for any purpose. Just to it's look cool. It's only there cool. to look cool. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I that and that is my uh, recipe for you, Mongolian uh, pan jam. W- nice. would, you, would you also serve that dish on like a Zoo Pals plate that's like a panda, <laughs> right? With the like the ears that are also smaller plates. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of imagining this is a little bit of more of kind of a step up because we're like taking the effort to like make this like kind of specialty item and like the, the make the, the bacon jam kind of thing go on. Um, so I'm I'm thinking maybe this is like a like a step up above of above above like a paper zoo plate kind of thing, but that is the the aesthetic, the nice. idea. Nice. Definitely. Yeah, we're, we're only using the fine china zoo plates. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, break out the fine china. We're having Mongolian pan jam. Pan jam. <laughs> My question is, why hasn't someone started making artisanal zoo plates like on an Etsy, where you like pay them fifty bucks and it like looks like a giraffe? Have you mm. searched Etsy? I mean, it might be there. It might. Okay, you've got me. I was doing a comedy bit and I hadn't done the research yet. <laughs> 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 got to do your research. Yeah. That's the, that's the one thing they teach you at comedy school is you got to <laughs> always the do the research. Yes. I'm at clown college and the guy's like, you got to fucking hit the books if you yeah. want to make sure to make them laugh. Two rules. <laughs> yes. And and research. Yes. <laughs> and Jeremy, I bet you feel real fucking stupid right now at these animal friends ceramic plates and they do cost $50. Hell yeah. Fuck. Well, I wasn't, I, look, I knew they would cost $50. So. <laughs> and I'm dropping a link because boy, do they look like a five-year-old Ooh. fucking made these. <laughs> My question, would you want them not to look like a five-year-old made them? If I'm paying 50, like I could have done this myself. Yeah. I, if, if it's, if it's on Etsy and I'm expected to pay like more money for it than I would 
for like oh, one of them's oh, broken. Yeah, these, look, these look terrible yeah. oh my god they look saying. so bad they look like they were made with like acrylic paint the, f- the yeah, frog is my favorite a bunch of them are bro- they're all broken what is this <laughs> what? why are they what broken are? <laughs> the, the, the bear one i assume it's a bear it also looks like a, a wild boar uh, the bro- it's broken, but there's like red all around it. So it's yeah, like, yeah. It's like blood, it blood. Oh god, yeah. It looks like it was like hurt. Honestly, oh, I'm this really... is insane. Yeah, I'm gonna drop you when you just search Zoo Pals on Etsy. You get such a wide <laughs> breath of like. <laughs> Not even that's the only Zoo Pal related thing. Some of the other things is uh, it's a hand knitted. Uh, like tissue box cover that looks like a vagina and you pull the tissues out of the vagina and it's called a tissue coochie coo. Oh, uh, a, a lot of Nicolas Cage items uh, here. You meant to say pickleless Cage. <laughs> yes, I did meant to say that. It's Nicolas Cage as a pickle. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Um, um, there's a, there's an octopus <laughs> flipping you off. Incredible. Oh god. There's... There's all sorts of things wrong with this search because, <laughs> like, yeah, the the animal friend ceramic plates are the first thing that pops up, but like nostalgia zoo plate stickers pop up also, and then also there's like a Shrek like toothpaste topper that's like <laughs> supposed to cool. go on the end of your. This is the first time I've ever seen this. It it's looks like, like a, Shrek shitting toothpaste. Yeah, but you put it like on your toothpaste tube. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do you close your toothpaste at that point? <laughs> <laughs> what is this page? I, well, I haven't been on Etsy in a very long time, and let me tell you, it's not what I anticipated. There's there's a, a 2023 calendar of dogs pooping in beautiful places. Yeah, um, I will say the best thing on this page is a plate that looks like Tom Nook, and that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, that's, oh, that is. Oh true. shit! Yeah, that one. Okay, that one's that one's pretty legit. Wow. That's yeah. why you always do your research. Yep. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Um, it's on my turn this time. So I was thinking to myself about the recipe. I was like, okay, uh, Pan Sham Express, it's going to be used. I, I can't do that. I'm going to be stepping on someone else's recipe. I want to try something else. So I, I really just kind of like sat, sat around and thought about it. I was sitting just in a chair in a dark room all by myself, contemplating what to do. And I came up with an interesting answer. So the thing that kept popping into my head was could I make like a pan champ steak with a blowtorch um, and, and, and like cook it like that. So you put it on like a rack and you like sear it with a blowtorch like all around it. And it's super rare. You mix it, you rub in some like herbs and spices to give it a nice crust, super rare. Um, and that was like, you put a little uh, garnish on top to make it like represent the pan champ leaf. And you know, the reason I kept thinking about this is a word kept jumping in my head and it was, Pan Cham Brulee. Now, here's the yeah. thing, is that creme brulee is like a sweet. It's a dessert, right? It's like a custard. Um, and I was like, can you brulee other items? And the answer is yes. You can use a blowtorch or a, ki- a cooking torch for anything is, if you want. It's, it's, it's a perfectly viable option. And if you want to make a super rare steak, uh, then it's, it's a viable path to do so because it's mostly going to cook the outside kind of situation. So it'll have a nice hard shell and a super rare interior. So, it's a dessert steak. Yes. A pan cham brulee is made as such. You get some oil, you rub in some herbs and spices onto the steak, you get a rack and you set it, and then you're going to not not super hot, pretty lightly. You're gonna get your uh, your uh, torch, and you're gonna go on on both sides. So it's a raised, it's kind of a raised rack that you can get to on both sides. Situation, and you're gonna have to turn it over a little bit, but you want to make sure it's kind of open air. And you do that uh, for about um, ten to fifteen minutes. It does take a while, uh, kind of situation to like cook through all the way that that you need to. That's it. You set it down. You get a nice side of mashed potatoes. Um, you put a little bit of garnish on top, maybe a little bit of mint jelly. That's a good steak serving, uh, a steak, uh, steak garnish to represent the leaf that the pan cham has. And that is my recipe, pan cham brulee. Nice. How, how large is this steak? Cause it's like, pretty, it's pretty small. It would be about like uh, six or eight ounces. Right. Okay. This is, this is some fine dining. Oh, absolutely. You're going to. 
go to a fucking restaurant that like is on the top of a very tall building and there's only like three seats and like uh and like the, there's no menus and like the the waiters are all wearing crazy hats kind of situation and this is like the recipe that you order there i feel like this could be like a astronomy like a baked alaska thing where they do it at the table Ooh, yeah they're like oh let me cook this tiny steak right now just Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um for for my birthday i went to a restaurant where the most popular dessert was a bananas foster and the reason it was is because they literally baked alaska right in front of you so people were just fucking setting fire to their ice cream on every table oh i love that kind of situation and i was like i don't i don't really like that dessert item so i want something else (laughs) and they gave, gave me a giant sparkler instead because i said it was my birthday um and I, had, I held it. I've, sh- I've shown you a picture of this, but... Uh, um, like, I just, want something else on fire. Yes. And they just Well, I just said, oh, it's my birthday. And they're like, oh, great. And they gave me a slice of cake and a sparkler. Now, the sparkler wasn't in the cake. They just gave it to me. And I had to hold it for like 30 seconds while it burned out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yes, this is the kind of restaurant where maybe you get a sparkler with your pan cham brulee um, uh, to, to, to like celebrate your delicious meal. Nice. I kind Excellent. of like to imagine that in like like if you were like a welder, you know, um, and someone asked you to like, oh, mend this fence. They instead were just like, can you brulee these like wrought iron gates together? Because <laughs> in my mind, when you were saying that you can brulee any kinds of food, that just meant like a substitute for blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> that is what that is what brulee means it is a torch that's like that's that's that is what it is but you can brulee steel beams you yes. can brulee yeah <laughs> but usually when you're uh welding that's at a much higher temperature and usually there's some sort of uh intermediate agent like uh, like soldering uh kind of situation uh that's not going to be the case here all right wow what a great selection of recipes this week let's review and vote on who has the best recipe from Ian, we have Pancham grilled, uh, or excuse me, Pancham beef and broccoli, Pancham express beef and broccoli to be more specific. Uh, from Evan, we have Hello Pancham candy. From Ben, we have Pan Jam, Mongolian Pan Jam. And from me, you have, uh, let's call it, um, what did they call it? Pancham brulee. So mm-hmm. everyone vote for their uh, favorite answer. And Ben, who is the winner this week? Hoo hoo hoo, boy. I am the winner this week Ooh. with a unanimous sweep of the of the vote. Yes. Wow. Um, I voted for Jeremy. Yeah, thank <clears> you. <throat> that, that would have been my second choice for sure. Honestly, this is like the first recipe and I can't tell you how many episodes where I'm like, yeah, that's actually, that sounds good. Like actually appetizing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I want to eat that. <laughs> well, I'm honored. Excellent. Uh, well, let's move on to everyone's favorite segment of the show. It's called Whale Lord's Mail Horde, uh, where we read your emails uh, and recipes sent into ichoosepod at gmail.com. That's I-C-H-E-W-S-P-O-D at gmail.com. Since we've been off, we've got a fucking stacked uh, mail section this week, a wumbo mail horde, if you will. Um, Evan, can you read this first email from Mike? I can indeed. This first uh, Wumbo email from Mike that says, Hey boys, a twofer for you. Noibat beer can chicken style. Fire up the grill. Crack open a cold one. Clean and skin your Noibat. Crack open a cold one. (laughs) Okay. Cut those tender bat wings off and set to the side. Crack open a cold one. (laughs) Oh Uh, shit, okay. Rub outside of your Noibat with olive oil and dry rub mix of thyme, rosemary, garlic, salt, and pepper. And crack open a cold one. Uh, take right. the wings and wrap them around the outside of your Noibat repeat, and repeat uh, the oil and dry rub. Crack open a cold one, but only drink half of it. Yes. Uh, then sit, uh, sit your Noibat on top of that beer can. Crack open another, yet another cold one. Uh, for those of you keeping score at home, I think that's at least six cold ones. <laughs> These uh, are like fries, five obviously. Half. Five, five yeah. and a half, you're right. Uh, <laughs> let, it, let it cook for a while uh, using indirect heat on your grill. And then, uh, you guessed it, crack open a cold one. Nice. By this point, you've had a lot of beers. You should probably eat something. Ding! Take the Noibat off the grill once cooked thoroughly. Remove the beer can, carefully saving any juices left in the can to make a flavorful sauce. I felt that the wings were the best way to give you, you more of that crispy chicken skin goodness that everybody loves. Uh, last step, profit. Oh. 
The, the second of the, the twofer is, uh, so it's Gudra time now. According to the Pokedex, Gudra is a very powerful Pokemon or powerful dragon that can use its horns to hit uh, with the power of a hundred professional heavyweight boxers. <laughs> uh, although incredibly strong, this baby just wants to be your best friend and give you goopy, slimy, sticky hooks, which is why I feel bad about having to cook and eat her. The man's got to eat, so presupposition time. I think Gudra being a dragon means that they're somewhat related to lizards, and therefore Gudra has the ability to detach their tail and become and be unharmed otherwise. Mm. Dragon meat probably tastes like an alligator, which it, uh, tastes also like a cliche. <laughs> so I present to you Chinese sticky barbecue Gudra tail. Ooh. First things first, uh, I don't know about you, but my oven isn't big enough to fit a whole Gudra tail inside of it, so we're going to have to take this outside. Uh, I'm sure you, the icy boys, all have a fire pit in your yard, which you cook while your Pokemon on a spit, just like I do. Uh, start, start a nice big fire. Uh, we're going to roast this tail. Put the Gudra uh, tail on the spit. Let it roast low and slow for a few hours. While that's roasting, we're going to make a sweet, sticky Chinese-style barbecue sauce to baste our tail with it as it cooks. To make the sauce, you're going to need uh, some housing sauce, soy sauce, garlic, five spice, oyster sauce, Shaoxing wine, uh, and you can substitute your favorite dry white wine, uh, white Colossian wine, mm. uh, salt, ginger, and instead of molasses and brown sugar, we're going to use some Gudra goo to make our sauce extra sticky. The best way to get to extract your Gudra goo is to wear a terry cloth bathrobe, give your Gudra a big old hug, and let the robe absorb the goo, and then just wring it out over your mixing bowls. <laughs> Apply this sauce every 30 minutes to cook in the flavor and ensure maximum stickiness. Enjoy with mixed veggies and rice or noodles of your choosing. I hope you're doing well, Mike. Thank you so much for writing in, Mike. Um, uh, next up, from Edward. Uh, Ian, can you read this recipe? Gladly. Gladly. Ed writes, Finger licking Gudra. Ooh. Hello again, my friends. I'm back this week. And while my knowledge of the Pokemon world is not as in-depth as our friend Chris's, I found something really interesting this week that might give us some insight and how fitting is that it's about Gudra. I was searching around the internet and found this lost draft for an extended ad spot for Colossian TV channels. I found it on a Rotom drive. So if you see any around, you should definitely boot it up if you can. I like the idea that somebody was just on the internet and they found a USB drive and they're like, oh shit, I'm going to plug this into my computer and see what happens. It's kind of like those. Um, I don't know if you've seen these. Like in uh, <clears throat> there was like a certain like sweet spot during the 2010s where people would like put USB drives full of music like literally in like weird places, like just like on the side oh, of buildings. Yeah. yeah. And people, you just like load, like slam your laptop into it and like rip whatever audio was on there. No <laughs> viruses at all. This kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> yeah. The text includes an actual recipe and more. Based on the profanity later, uh, later on, I'm unsure if it was actually aired or just edited down a bit before it was actually produced. If that. Anyway, here it is. Do you find yourself to be more sedentary than to your liking? Oh. Falling behind on that New Year's resolution of running more. We. Oui. <laughs> Looking to become Kalos's new weightlifting champion? Oh, more French. Good, because you found yourself in the exact right location. At our new Gold Dean's Gym, you can find the right personal trainer for that Pokemon trainer. We've got plenty of fighting type mons ready to help you reach your physical goals. <laughs> but if you're looking to get into boxing, you're going to want to train with our staff of Gudra. They're the best draw. <laughs> <laughs> for a monthly payment of only 100,000 Poke Dollars, you can be your best tra in parentheses. <laughs> yes <laughs> our <laughs> our best dra plan hits you with a gudra oh hitting you God. from three different angles but thankfully not physically often and not with the antennae <laughs> which can hurt as we learned from the last email can hit with the punch force of 100 heavyweight boxers exactly. right mm -hmm. <laughs> first uh, for you to get those massive machamp gains you're going to need to increase those macros. 
And we're not talking about key bindings, computer nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I would love like, to watch like uh, advertising on TV and they're th- for a gym and it's like, this is not for you fucking nerds. Don't, don't watch. <laughs> don't, you don't belong here. For the gains to happen, oh. you'll have to increase that protein intake. Thankfully, Gudra have the same consistency and an even greater protein content than any egg we know of. Every morning, you'll slurp up a nice liter of liquefied uh, Hisuian Gudra out of our commemorative Hisuian Gudra shell replica cup. Okay, so it's like a big egg shell that they're sitting in and you're drinking their goo. Okay, continue. Yep. Second, in your workout, you'll be boxing fist to antennae alongside our Gudra in the ring. Let's hope you don't get hit too much. These guys pack a punch. And let's just say they are not happy about the whole drinking their ancestors from Hisui. But it is great motivation. <laughs> this is a really unusual ad, I will have to say. <laughs> Third. You'll need, to recover the... <laughs> you'll need to recover those burnt calories after. Thankfully, here at our gym, we've got a proprietary restaurant. Colossian Fried Gudra. <laughs> Fried. We've got a special way to fry them here in Kalos. Uh, smiley face. <laughs> but if you want to make it at home, here's the recipe. Nice. <laughs> Ingredients. Colossian Gudra. Um, they're significantly more solid than their ancient counterparts. Part of that is because the more solid ones could survive a lot easier for a lot longer. Uh, a fryer. Certainly Ed meant to say air fryer. Mm. And whatever the fuck else you put on a chicken sandwich. Pickles, uh, <laughs> chupai, mayo, sriracha mayo, whatever the hell you want. I, I like you're reading a recipe and it's like, okay, number one, pound of chicken. Okay, number two, oil. <laughs> the, number the three, whatever. Fry. I don't know what the yeah. fuck. You figure it out. <laughs> Thanks for a good recipe. You're going to need a big knife. We're just going to slice into the gudra to make some fillets. Watch out. They do not like this part because they can regenerate a bit. They won't die if you do it, but it's a lot more difficult if they're still alive, given how powerful a punch they pack. But mm-hmm. you definitely already know that by this point. Once you get that fillet, you're going to uh, flour and chancy egg wash and breadcrumb it, and then throw in the fryer. Assemble your sandwich and eat. You've made it this far. You deserve that sandwich and the gains you've achieved and received oh, yeah. by this point. Oh yeah. Enjoy a side of Diglett fries on the side. Can't believe this was the draft for an actual commercial for an actual gym in Kalos. A little unsettling, but hey, it's Kalos. Excited to hear everyone's recipes, Ed. And then Ed did reply uh, with um, the inspiration from their notes app, uh, Swain Gujra recipe. Uh, the only notes here are egg white slurp up, <laughs> massive gains. <laughs> Goldine's gem fake advertisement. <laughs> and that spawned this beautiful email. That's the the thought process. Um I don't I don't want to be a little too overly critical, but I do have to say that as a uh listener, I was losing the rhetorical situation of it being an a draft of an ad. So just saying. <laughs> you're saying because it felt so real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like you're this couldn't be a draft. <laughs> All right. Uh We have another email from Ed. Ben, can you read this email? I can. Um, Ed writes this other email that is unrelated to um, uh, Pancham, but it is a random query um, for us and the I Choose You community. Um, And they write, hello all. I hope this email finds you well. Um, As a... (laughs) This this email is very strangely punctuated. (laughs) (laughs) Um, as a few choo- as a oh, oh my god it's a type as <laughs> as a some choosies live in America <laughs> and American Thanksgiving is coming up and inspired by a talk Mike and I are having on Twitter right now and the past couple days about Applin Flapple and Appleton the classic staple Amer- apple pie um, <laughs> for listeners home this email is written like an E.E. E. Cummings poem. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions about it, comma. <laughs> team cheddar cheese, comma, team vanilla ice cream, question mark. Which one are you? Uh, ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I've, ice cream I've never sure. had cheddar cheese on an apple pie. I haven't either. It sounds good. My dad used to do that all the time. It feels like something I would like the next time I'm out of town. 
maybe that's who I'm gonna be. <laughs> maybe it's, it's she's on a pie guy. guy. Yeah. With my coffee. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> pie and coffee, pretty good. Would, in all caps, you try both at the same time? Sure. If not, what about a cheddar cheese flavored ice cream? Gross. Sound off in the comments. Love to all the choosies out there, Ed. <laughs> well, I think I answered all those questions. Um, uh, I've only had it with ice cream. Uh, both at the same time, sure, I'll give it a shot. Cheddar ice cream sounds gross. Those are my answers. Uh, I think we've covered this, but Ed responds um, in a follow-up email. It says, as for my answer, I have never tried cheddar with apple pie, in all caps. <laughs> But I have it regularly with my appy slices that I prepare for my lunches. Mm. I'd try everything I mentioned. I don't think I'd like the cheese and vanilla ice cream together, but I'd try it. But I think I might like it more than the cheddar ice cream. Agreed. Isn't, isn't this an interesting point, though? Because it's like, <laughs> what is cheese if not, like, just, like, post uh you know, it's it's a later form of milk, which is yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a milk loved form of yeah. milk, <laughs> right? So it's like it'd be like saying like, oh, like I, I can't have my lamb with my mutton. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, let me let me just say this uh, realistically: is that uh, ice cream? Uh, I'll just say th- one is it's sweet, and the other one is uh, bitter, salty. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, it has more bitter flavor than ice cream. No, that, was, that isn't inherently contradictory. I mean, they're inherently contradictory, but that doesn't mean they're bad together. Uh, but I think that's the main difference is uh, taking them in two different ways. I, I'm going to have to pass on having ice cream and cheese in the same bite just for the yeah. sake of uh, my digestion will absolutely destroy me. Yeah, that's, that happens. that's a that's a real uh, two hour on the toilet kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's not. I it, I feel like the the pros <laughs> would not match the level of con <laughs> that would be required in that decision. Ben, if you eat it like late at night, think of all the fucked up dreams you'd have if you ate cheese ice cream. Right before you went dreams. To bed. Yeah, that's true. There you go. All right. Uh, I'm going to read uh, one last email from Mike again. And this one's about Pancham. And Mike says, tip scally cap to the boys. <laughs> Thanks you, m'lady. Um, when I heard Pancham <laughs> was on the menu, my mind immediately went to the staple item of, as Ben being impersonated by Ian would say, the greatest fucking city in the world, New York City. There it is. The food he's, item- b- he's back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the food item in question, of course, is the black and white cookie. Ben, did you ever have one of those? Um, I think so. Okay. Oh, man. I, have you guys had the Trader Joe's black and white cookies? Yeah, no. they're quite good. No. Fucking fantastic. I've eaten a lot. And... Ah, <laughs> oh, get out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excuse me. Pancham is a little hoodlum pandem that chews a little bamboo shoot to look cool. It does. If that doesn't scream, I'm walking here, then I don't know what does. Ooh. We all know Good how point. to make classic black and white cookie, which apparently is called a half moon in some places, question mark. It's okay for those people to be wrong, though. Uh, Mike is from the New York area, so this is why he feels this way. Um, standard cookie business, flour, sugar, milk, baking powder, salt, etc. Where does Pancham fit into this? Obviously the eggs, right? I feel like we've all drifted, drifted away from using Pokemon eggs as an easy out for the best. But really, this is more of inspired by recipe. Unless you want to go crazy, then I guess we could utilize the Panchem itself for gelatin, which could work for both chocolate and vanilla frosting. I don't know. Gelatin is an ingredient in Pop-Tart frosting. The magic of Mm. the recipe is entirely in the presentation because you're going to do your black and white frosting so it looks like a sweet Panchem treat. Enjoy with hot coffee or a cold glass of milk. Like we say in Brooklyn, I'm walking here, Mike. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good one. Excellent. Well, thanks for uh, your emails, but we're not done yet. No, oh, no, no, no. Uh, ben, I've heard you have a Twitter thread from Pokemaniac Chris. I indeed do. Um, it, yeah, we wouldn't be a Wumbo mail horde without a little Pokemaniac Chris. Am I right? Oh, absolutely not. So Pokemaniac Chris tweets at I choose pod. Um, I know a place in Lumio City that does a pretty good black and white Pancham noodle bowl. Nice. The gimmick is everything in the dish is black or white. You cook the pancham in two portions and throw everything together at the end with some rice noodles and a clear broth. Um, both portions of pancham meat are being fried with a light batter. 
The quote-unquote black portion is flavored with black pepper, black garlic, black sesame, dark soy sauce, and black vinegar. The quote-unquote white is flavored with ginger, shredded coconut, onion, and white pepper. Hmm. And, of course, once it's fried, the white pancham meat still ends up looking golden brown, so at the end, it's usually rolled in white sesame seeds and dusted with corn flour. You uh, you also saute some black and white vegetables, parsnip, daikon radish, black beans, and black peppers. It isn't uh, traditional Colossian food, it's the kind of showboating they do for the tourists. The usual drink pairing is also kind of gimmicky, a cocktail with gin and bamboo syrup. Luckily, that means you can you, you can order black raspberry LaCroix, and they won't think you're snubbing the wine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, I, I still think that might... Be, if I went to a vet, just go to the fucking nicest restaurant, three Michelin stars... And they're like, oh, sir, what can we get for you to drink? And you're like, one LaCroix, please. Yeah, give me give me that sparkling <laughs> essence water. Yes. Do you have black raspberry LaCroix? Yes. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'm, tap water is fine yes. for me, thanks. Excellent. Uh, thanks for writing in, Pokemania, Chris. Uh, one last note from Ed on the uh, Discord. Uh, they say uh, about Pancham, as a panda Pokemon, I simply would bully this thing so I can take the bamboo and then I would make a bassoon reed out of the bamboo. So oh. that's what that's what mm. Ed would do. So that's all of our recipes. We got that covered. It's an extra long episode. That's okay. We've been gone for a few weeks. Um, let's uh, pick next week's Pokemon in a segment I like to call Pikamon. Evan, randomly generate a number between 650 and 721. All right. Next week's Pokemon is... 678 678 you say and 678 is uh is meow stick the evolution of esper mm, i don't know nice. if you remember All this right. um but uh yeah it's uh it's pretty cute it's got it kind of looks like a cat all that business. It's kind of like spaced out looking, right? It's got uh, like that, a like far off look in its eyes. Well, that, that's that's esper. This is meow stick oh. the evolution of esper. Uh, okay. kind of situation no no esper's uh, hot with the kids these days uh because it's uh high and it's, it's smoking mm. that weed cat right yes okay i remember the okay yeah yeah, yeah. this one looks Excellent. familiar now all right uh that's that uh okay let's do uh let's oh, i'm just rushing through this social media plugs tell us where we can find you uh ben let's start with you uh, normally this is the part of the show where i would say you can follow me on twitter at ben c montoya but um <clears throat> With Twitter being the way it is right now, I am not on Twitter as often, and I'm actually more on Tumblr. Um, oh, he's back! I am back on the Tumblr, the Tumblogs, <laughs> as it as it is, um, and uh, you can follow me there um, at Ben C Montoya. Same place. Wow, wonderful. When are you gonna switch to Mastodon? <laughs> I keep I'm, seeing people post about Mastodon, but I've heard it kind of sucks. And I already know the it. ways that Tumblr sucks, so I'm more into that. <laughs> oh, see, look, here's the thing. Is Mastodon is that you have to go into like specified servers, and it's like kind of closer to a Discord. I mean, you, it's like if you were on a Discord and you're getting messages from other people's servers into your Discord server, if that makes sense. That's how Mastodon works. Yeah, I'm going to stay out of that one. Um, I'm just going to be yeah. reblogging uh, Re-blog. Supernatural gift sets. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. I'm excited for this new uh, series of Doctor Who. Did you hear they're bringing David Tennant back? That's what everyone's saying. And it, I mean, it's true. This is what happened. Um, all right. Uh, Ian, what do you got? Um, yeah, why don't you go follow me on uh, Instagram at Ian Reynolds Photo. That's my photography business. <laughs> Uh, I am a full-fledged uh, wedding photographer, so if you want me to photograph your wedding and uh, pay me money, you can do that. You can follow me there. You can check out my portfolio, my website. If you live out of the state of New Mexico, you want me to shoot the wedding, just pay for my airfare and a hotel room, and I'll do it for free. That's cheaper than any fucking photographer you're going to get that's worth his salt. So uh, get it together. Give me a call. Ghostbusters, Evan. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have no plugs this week, but if you just want to send me uh, a nice email, you can send it to me at ichoosepod at gmail.com. <laughs> nice. Evan opens up the email account and it's like, you have been cursed. If you don't send this email <laughs> yeah. to 10 other people, 
the fucking Ringu lady will get you. I I have a friend that will just send me the the like copy pasta like texts every holiday. There's like a dis- oh, disgusting happy one. Yeah, they <laughs> nice, beautiful. Yeah, that one made the rounds for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, you can. I'm still on Twitter uh, doing stuff. You can follow me at Velocity Prime One. Yesterday, I had a hit tweet, so that's how it goes. Um, hit uh, tweet. A hit, hit tweet. tweet. Uh, it wasn't that big of a hit. Only got 100 likes, but it's the first one I've had in a while. Um, Damn. And I obviously I still have to run the uh, I Choose You social media pages. So uh, maybe we should get obviously. an I Choose. I look. I Choose You has been diligently. Uh, that's at Vasility Prime One on Twitter, but it also has been I choose you has been diligently posting every week for the last three years to my Tumblr page as well. So if you want to just go there and look at it, and hey, we've got some listeners from the Tumblr. I've got some likes and reblogs there. Um, uh, check it out at Velocity Prime One on all those things. Also check out the dash avocado dot org. The dash avocado dot org is home to my writing. Jeremy Zelik at the dash avocado dot org, and uh, that covers it for I choose you. This has been I choose you the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. You can find us on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify, or your podcast catcher of choice. If you like our show, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us go up the ranks. If you want more I Choose You goodness, may I suggest checking out our social media pages on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. That's I Choose Pod on all those accounts. Uh, Musk might be trying to bring us down, but well, fuck, I'll pay $8 and then I'll change the I Choose You the handle to Elon Musk and I'll say, like, drink my balls or whatever. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing that we can ever do with this platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and any anywho, check that out. Uh, if you want more I Choose, if you want to be a part of the I Choose You community, check out the Discord. I Choose You Discord link is available in the episode description. Lastly, but not leastly, check out the official I Choose You website, ichooseyou.menu. It uh, has a full episode archive and a merch store, all designed by one Evan Aubrey. Uh, all that and more on ichooseyou.menu. I, think that's- I just I just want to reemphasize with Twitter changing the way it is. I think Discord is definitely the place to be for choosy community happenings and communication mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um so definitely go ahead and join if that's something that you have been like, oh, I'll get around to it or like whatever. Um, now and we're now gonna, you're getting around to it. Yeah. Um, and we're actually going to have a community event on November 20th uh, at 4.30 Pacific time. Um, and we're not really sure what we're going to be doing then, but we might be playing Pokemon. We might be playing uh, other games. We might be watching a movie, whatever. Um, so we're going to have some sort of community event on uh, Sunday, November 20th in the Discord. So join and hang out with us and uh it's a good it's a good corner of the internet to be if you're yeah. looking for places to be on the internet i agree uh all right this has been i choose you i've been your host jeremy zelik the alton brown of the group <laughs> i've been your friend on this show ben montoya i've been jack black Ian davis <laughs> i've been your uh evan on this aubrey <laughs> Evan Aubrey. <laughs> to all of the choosies <laughs> out there in Radio Land, in a while, Toto Dial. Yeah, I choose you. Yeah, I choose you. Everybody wants to be a master. Chef. Everybody wants to show their skill. In the kitchen, everybody wants to cook that cruncher. Finny in at the top of the grill. Each time you fry, gonna cook it just a little bit better. Each taste, you try, boy, this froakie is nice and tender. It's a whole new world we cook in. It's a whole new place to eat. We're in season six with some brand new recipes. Cause we're still gonna cook them all and make a pun or two or three. Make a pun or two or three.